So, hey everyone, uh, in the last video uh, I worked on this project and in this video I'd like to further improve it. As mentioned last time, the speed of the whole thing for downloading is about 500 kilobytes per second, which is not great, so I'd like to improve that. The general design of the page could be a bit better with thumbnails as tiles for previews. I'll see what else I can improve as the time goes on. The first thing that I'm going to do is the tile view. Yeah, see you. See, see you then. Now that, 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 that was not a jump cut because uh, luckily I've already uh, done it yesterday. So uh, here uh, we've got the classic list view. And then if we press on here on the uh, the, the tile view, then we have this, which has all of the tiles. Currently, as you can see, uh, there are missing thumbnails. Uh, this is because uh, we have one uh, major issue. So the images that are on uh, this SD card uh, can be up to basically infinite pixels, uh, let's say. So the issue is how are we going to generate the thumbnails be because we don't have infinite RAM and I cannot just load the images because I would run out of RAM for some larger images. Uh, so I have to figure that out. I can either decompress the images onto the SD card as well, which I guess has infinite storage, and then work with that, uh, or I can, I don't know, send it to my computer, which seems kind of lame. I like it to all be on a microcontroller. Uh, so I'll have to figure that out. Uh, I'm planning to use uh, STB image. I'm not sure what can I do with it. Uh, I'll have to figure that out as well. So, uh, See you then, and this is now gonna be a jump cut. Later, that's it. All right, uh, this took uh, an absurd amount of time. So uh, I got the thumbnails to work, which is really nice. And uh, this was a roller coaster. So my first idea was to actually downsample the images on the ESP uh, itself. But eventually I gave up on that idea uh, because STB image, which is the library that I would use, would allocate big chunks of memory and I couldn't figure it out how can I replace these chunks of memory with memory on the SD card and so on. Uh, it's very complicated and uh, yeah, eventually I gave up. Because either way, I'm uploading images to the SD card from the computer, so I might as well write a program that just checks all of the images and sees if they have their own thumbnail file. So that is exactly what this does. The way this works uh, is it basically goes through all of the files and then it gets the file name, it combines that with the file size, uh, it uses that as a string, then it hashes it and that is the file name of the thumbnail. And then it loads the image, it adds black borders if the image is not a uh, one by one aspect ratio, and then it downsamples it. And then eventually it saves it to the disk. Now this idea was simple, uh, but it turns out that it does not always work because STB image does not read what I think is EXIF data. So in the case of all of these images, all of them would work, except uh, this one would cause issues because it is an image from a Sony camera and Sony always saves images in landscape orientation, even though some images might be portrait mode. And then it just tells you, hey, uh, rotate this image when you are decoding. I probably would not have noticed this if I didn't use Sony gear, but since I plan to use it for Sony images, uh, then this is an issue. Now, uh, STB image doesn't do that, so I had to completely, uh, I guess, reverse engineer the JPEG format to find uh, exactly when we're talking about the Sony image and then do a little bit of rotation. And that took so many hours. Uh, I, I hate this. Uh, this code down here, uh, what that does is, so I knew that there had to be a few bytes of difference between portrait and landscape images. I just didn't know where to search. So what I did was I found a few uh, landscape and a few portrait photos. 
the byte at some position, since we're talking about headers, these should be identical, and they are, thankfully. Uh, so the byte at some position uh, should be the same for all uh, landscape images, but then different compared to portrait, which should also be the same for all portrait images. So yeah, that is what this does, and with it I successfully found which byte I need to check, which is the byte 54. And in case it is 8, it means uh, rotate clockwise for 270 degrees. And in that case, I do some flipping here, and uh, yeah, it works. So now that this works, uh, I have the full list view and the tile view. These all work fine. I also worked on the responsiveness of the page. So as you can see here, when I change the width of the page, it changes the number of tiles. And uh, this is specifically for mobile, where you'll see two tiles side by side. And then on desktop, you can see it goes up to five. I'd now consider this step to be done. The next thing I'll do is test the four pin uh, connection to the SD card. I, I can't look at the screen anymore. Uh, so I'm gonna do some soldiering and then I'll be back. Okay, so uh, I successfully soldered this. Uh, focus, please. Okay, there we go. That took a while. Uh, so yeah, uh, it it is it is it is really nice. Uh, and uh, now is the time to actually again hook this up to the main experimental board, which for which I'll need a few resistors that my camera definitely won't focus. Oh, there we go. So I got one resistor here, I'll need six in total. Uh, and hopefully then I'll be able to just change a few lines of code, use it in four pin mode, and hopefully we should be able to get 5G speeds. Uh, I'm kidding of course, uh, but uh, it should be a substantial improvement. Although uh, I'm not sure what is the speed limit of the ESP itself, but hopefully uh, uh, there will be at least some improvement compared to what is now 500 kilobytes per second. Okay, so uh, I got everything hooked up. It kind of looks funny with the SD card floating. So interestingly, here the default speed of the SD card is set to 40 kilohertz, if I'm not wrong, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, not sure why. This is gonna be my first reaction to this new SD card reading method, so let's uh, le let's see here. First we're gonna start off with the classic meme. Okay, that was pretty fast, I'd say. Uh, let's check out the classic image. Cool, so this is running at around 500 kilobytes a second, which makes me think that this might not be 40 kilohertz, but 40 megahertz. Yep, so this is in kilohertz, uh, which has me slightly worried that this new mode won't be as fast as I think it will be. Let's change this to 4-bit mode, and let's see what happens. Okay, let's see here. How fast is this gonna download? 3, 2, 1, go. And unfortunately, it seems like the bottleneck is Wi-Fi. I am disappointed. <laughs> I did a bit of testing uh, with this code here and uh, yeah the results speak for themselves. We can get reading speeds up to 5 megabytes per second which is very nice unless the compiler optimized something here which I don't think it has. So yeah this is very convenient unfortunately we can't get those speeds because because what i think is happening is the wi-fi speed but we have we have definitely passed the 500 kilobytes per second mark we're now at about 600 uh, but i think definitely the issue is now the wi-fi speed i don't know i guess i can connect an ethernet this is an ethernet connector and uh, it's been two weeks actually, uh, for you it's been a few seconds. Uh, I hope this will actually increase the speed now. Although this is using SPI, so I'm not sure what can I expect. Uh, there also might have been multiple connectors that I could have gotten. 
but I have this one, which is the W5500. Uh, and yeah, let, let's hook it up and let's see how it turns out. I've got it hooked up. Uh, I've changed some of the code here. Uh, this is also currently running at 20 megahertz and can potentially go up to 80, I think. So let's see here. How fast is Pepe here? That is quick as expected. Let's try out the classic five megabyte image. And that already seems to be slightly faster. We have, it says 650 kilobytes. That is, that is very nice. Uh, let's bump this up and test again. I bumped it up to 40 megahertz now. I also had to do some work behind the scenes because I think I was getting too much interference because of the length of the cables. Now that that is all fixed and we can run at 40 megahertz, uh, it cannot go above that. We are getting speeds of 800 kilobytes per second. This is 60% faster than what it used to be not that long time ago. And although this seems to be basically the last possible thing that I could do, I think there is one more change that I could implement, which would be to use both cores to send data. I think what is happening here is one core is trying to both read from the SD card and upload it over to the ethernet. And both of this takes time. So if I could somehow split this, or I guess make some buffering system, split this so that our thread that is updating the display is actually loading the data from the SD card and then the second thread with the ethernet can read it and quickly upload it. I think we might be able to squeeze just a little bit more performance. Since what I've read online, we might be able to get over that one megabyte per second. I'll try to improve this somehow off camera and I'll be back with the results if there will be any. After a bit of multi-threading, debugging and optimizing, this is the final result. So this is a 5 megabyte file. It was sent in 4.6 seconds. That means that this passed the 1 megabyte per second mark and it is on average about 1.2 megabytes per second. Which I'm really happy with, obviously. Let's explain the code a bit. So the way this works is basically in memory, I've allocated 16 buffers that are the size of 8192 bytes. And then if the actual file that needs to be sent is large enough, which is determined by this 32 kilobyte limit, anything above 32 kilobytes, we'll use both cores to both read from the SD card and write to the ethernet adapter. The SD card core will basically go in a loop and search for all used slash invalid uh, chunks of memory and then load the new SD card data from it. And the Ethernet core will read and invalidate or use those chunks of memory and send them to the client. And that's pretty much it. I think I'm done with this project. Oh, and one more thing uh, now that Ethernet works really well. Let's see actually how much Wi-Fi benefits from the same improvements. So Wi-Fi is still slightly slower, uh, which is nice because otherwise uh, there would be no point in me having an Ethernet uh, adapter. It isn't slower by all that much. It is about 800 kilobytes per second, which is still way faster than what we had in the previous episode. So that is pretty much it for this project uh, and this video as well. I think adding these changes was worth the time uh, as long as it did take. I had to wait two weeks to get uh, the ethernet adapter. So yeah, uh, that is pretty much it. Uh, let me know down below uh, if you have any ideas on what I should do next. Uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, thank you for watching as always. 
and until the next one.